bro. <laughs> so I just immediately like. <laughs> <laughs> we saw some raccoon. He started talking trash a bit about Copenhagen Flames. And oh no way! Hey, I'm gonna catch one. It's time for the gauntlet challenge. What is the gauntlet? No, 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 no! It's the fucking goal! Ah! Ah! No way! This is last place. It went really badly. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say it's good because I would say it was great. Let's go, baby! <laughs> What's going on, Blast TV? They finally gave me my own show, so let's make it good. I've flown in Counter-Strike gods from all over the world to come and be grilled by me on their past, present, and future. We've got interviews, great moments, and finally, all new gauntlet map made to test the skills of our upcoming guests. Welcome to your new favorite televised vacation. This is The Launder Show. Tonight, we've got a player who wears his heart on his sleeve. A guy who was a part of the strongest core in CSGO history, Somebody who, if you looked his name up, would be synonymous and right beside Entry Fragger in CSGO. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Dupree. <laughs> I shake everyone's hand, thank you for clapping, thank you for being here, we're so excited to have you tonight, Dupree. Thank you. You can't say no to this next question, so just want to start off on the right foot. Would you like a glass of water? Yes, please. Okay, we are in the right country for tap water. We are, we are, we are. We, we could argue the best tap water in the world. Do you drink a lot of water? I try to. Yep. I, I have a I have a tendency of drinking too much coffee, so I'm trying to give myself a little bit more water. You gotta balance it out. It's the long con, isn't it, Dupree? You've been playing forever, and uh, you are a player who has so much longevity in the game. Was there a, a moment where you noticed, okay, now I've got to take my body a little bit more seriously. I already know how to play Counter-Strike. Yeah. It's actually been a huge change, you know. I've been a, I've been part of the professional scene for, for a long time, and back in Australia, we started learning about all these benefits that it could give you inside the game. Um, eating healthy and drinking drinking a lot of water and doing uh, regular workouts. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the way everything comes from. Did you ever have a surreal moment when you were first starting to kind of become a professional Counter-Strike player? I've, I've, I've had so many different, both awkward and funny ones and exciting ones. And ever since I've gotten like famous in that sense, I going out with my friends that are like my, my longtime friends, you know, they think it has been in the beginning. It was also really surreal for them because all of a sudden, Random people were coming up to me asking for an autograph or a photo or whatever it could be. And for them, they were just like, it's just Peter. Like, why do you want his autograph and whatever it is, you know? <laughs> that's also a thing that's kind of weird. Dupree, we live in a time where gamers are under attack. Yes. We are attacked for our <laughs> lifestyle, for our hobbies. Are internet friends real friends? Uh, 100%, yes, 100%. My best friend as of now is, is someone that I started talking with maybe, what, seven, eight years ago? And back then, he, he was a former professional Counter-Strike player in Counter-Strike Source. I knew about him, but I, we never really spoke. And then all of a sudden, we found ourselves playing some game together. And now we're just hanging out in real life as well. You know, we're spending vacations together and all that stuff. So it doesn't really matter for me. Can you play Counter-Strike with these friends, or are they not good enough? Yeah, I can play Counter-Strike. You know, they're not bad, but they're not professional either. So it's a big mix, but they know how to shoot. Usually, in the position where I need to some sort of carry as well, like fragging, but also in-game reading, but also doing all the utility. So it can be a kind of a hot mix sometimes. And then, so what's your name on Steam when you have to carry your friends secretly? Uh, I have a few fake nicks. Uh, I, I rarely go by Dupree, actually. What's your name on Tarkov? My name is K dot, and then N-E-P-P-E-T, which is Nippet. And if you put things together, it means Knibble, which is uh, a, a fun way of writing. It actually means get <laughs> in English. <laughs> okay. Do you watch any anime, Dupree? Uh, no, actually no. I think uh, that's like the one thing I do not watch. Yeah, there's anime fans at home listening and they're crying right now. So do you have anything to say to them? Um, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> I, I mean, I, hopefully they feel better about that. I hope so. I mean, I do whatever you do. I mean, I, I don't judge what people do. But whatever they can watch and do whatever. I just don't feel like anime is something for me. What about moments? What about what? What was that? Ah, the, ah, yeah. Okay, I know that. That's a, that's a movement. I mean, what, this are they, what are they called? A movement. Moomin. Yeah. Moomin's That's the, the Danish word. Yes, exactly. The Moomies. There we go. <laughs> I wanted to ask you because uh, when you play Counter-Strike, mm. people know when you play Counter-Strike, yeah. you can't play single-player games anymore. They're not hard enough. They're not challenging enough. There's not enough going on. Have you always played single-player games? Yes, I still do. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah, I do. I was going to say that Tarkov is like the perfect next game where it's multiplayer. It's not Counter-Strike, but it's still fun. Tarkov is, is, has a really steep learning curve. I do, and I have played a lot of Tarkov. Uh, oh, I know. 
You know? Yeah, because Blast London, I remember you guys, it was like after games, we had the, the prac rooms downstairs yeah. and we were all in the area watching movies and stuff like that and you guys were playing Tarkov. Nice. Now that the season has started, I'm playing less because I don't have as much time, but whenever I'm off, I, I could do that. But it's a game that, it, that I, I surely enjoy. But I also enjoy playing, playing single player games. The only thing I have with single player games is that I always try to do the 100%. So I, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it takes You're ages. You're completionist. Yeah, but it takes ages. And yeah. it's so stupid. I only completed one game 100%. So I don't know why I am keep doing it because I always fall off. But I, I can't stop. Is that game Counter-Strike Dupree? No, that's actually Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, so Dupree, amazing to talk to you so far. And I want to talk to you more, but first I'd like to go and watch some clips and then we can continue this conversation. I want to see if we can jog your memory here so we get the clip from the demo itself, but you already recognize it, don't you? Yeah, I mean, from one thing is from the skin. One is the, that me, I'm playing the the, the, the op right now yeah. and on the T side, so it's me main oping and it's against SK. And the reason why I was playing op was that the device was sidelined because of the... Uh, uh, personal personal reasons. Yeah, it was just crazy. I'm, I'm in a situation where I, I need to clutch here and I start spamming the smoke and I just remember the crowd going crazy, calls through, runs through and I just like, la, 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 la. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, everything just went crazy. You were kind of forced to op, yeah. but then you continued oping, of course, and you had a great tournament. This tournament, yeah, I, yeah. Had, a, I had a really good tournament here. And then I thought, ah, so easy oping. We went to a major at once. We had a discussion within the team. Device actually felt like playing a little bit of rifle. I was like, sure, I'm, I've been doing pretty well on the op and uh, this, this tournament, so I'm just gonna continue. I think I had a really bad first game, then I had a really good second game, and then things started to get crucial because it was the old system where you would, uh, it was only best of ones all the way through. I remember we were, I think we were playing against Cloud9, the old Cloud9 that was uh, Skadoodle and uh, Automatic and Terrig and whatever it was. And what happened is that I tell Device in the middle of a game where I'm, just, I'm not hitting and I'm doing it, I was like, Nikolai, we're going to swap back. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and we made the swap mid-game. Mid-game. <laughs> yeah, mid-game. He gave started, him the op. Yeah, he gave, I was like, take the op back. He's like, okay. Yeah. And we just uh, decided to go back to the old thing. So I started rifling and he started playing op. Yeah. 